We have new regulation in the UK as it relates to crypto assets, as they call them. We're going to get into all of the updates and everything it means for you as XRP holders. Ugh, this is a wild one. Let's get into it. So on October 30th, the day of recording, this is yesterday, the UK introduced a new legislation relating to digital assets. And it's basically caused uh, turmoil <laughs> in crypto in the UK. Specifically, I mean, we, let's talk about it here. Caleb and Brown, for example, as a result of these new regulations, they cannot onboard any more individuals in the UK because of this regulation. They're stopping that onboarding process for Caleb and Brown. The rest of the US is, is fine and the rest of the world is fine to use Caleb and Brown. And if you are a UK individual and you already have a Caleb and Brown account, you can still use Caleb and Brown. But if you want to start using Caleb and Brown, you no longer can do that. That comes into all of these marketing restrictions that we're about to get into. This is part of the regulation. It's a double-edged sword, but we're gonna get into every single detail. So basically across the board, you cannot invite or induce engagement in investments concerning any of their qualified digital assets. There are some exceptions where you can kind of have like an NFT, for example, and that can be fine and, and clear. I would assume that it has to have utility at this point, which is fantastic news because you can't go out talking about uh, Shiba Inu and how amazing Shiba Inu is because there's no regulatory clarity. It has no real utility, for example. But when you look at XDC, for example, and the smart contracts built on top of there, it's kind of different because it actually has some utility. Sometimes it's less about the investment and more about the utility. And I think that's the distinction that they're making here. Although it's kind of scary <laughs> to, th to think about. And I think this is what's kind of taken Caleb and Brown down in the UK is because they can't talk about it anymore. They can't say like, oh, invite your friends or there's no like referral program. You can't do that anymore. So you have to make sure that you're now compliant with the new rules. You always have to seek approval from and any activity you do. You have to go to the Financial Conduct Authority to seek approval. You always have to be kind of updating your clients to let them know what's happening and educating them on what's happening. What they've even said here is that if you cannot ensure that new UK individuals are going to start using your services, you have to geo-block them, meaning your services actually te technically cannot get to people in certain geographies. I think that's probably what Caleb and Brown have had to do. And it won't just be Caleb and Brown. There'll be many, many companies out there doing the same thing. So as of now, you cannot run unverified promotions without getting them verified by an authorized agent. And basically you have to avoid anything that could be misconstrued as investment advice. And so, you know, you, you hear this on all kinds of videos. This isn't financial advice. It's no good just saying that. There's like no point in saying this is not financial advice. You just cannot give financial advice. <laughs> Pure and simple. And this is, I, I mean, I don't know if the timing could have been any more perfect with the 1% mastermind. But when you join that mastermind, there is no investment advice or anything in there or, or kind of estate planning or wealth management. There's nothing like that in there from me or from anyone in the community. But what you can do when you get to the 1% mastermind is go in there, look at the directory of professionals and make contact with professionals to help you out on these things, right? These are the professionals, they are licensed. I'm acting almost as a directory for you and a knowledge bank for you to educate yourself so you can take those queries and questions to professionals that are regulated in this. And so I don't know if there could have been any better timing on this 1% mastermind than right now, specifically in the UK. So there are also new advertising rules. They have completely banned refer a friend systems, like you cannot refer friends anymore in the UK because there is something called a cooling off period for first time crypto investors, where they invest in crypto for the first time, there's a cooling off period for them to learn and educate themselves about the space. And then they might be able to participate in some of these promotions, if you will, or refer a friend things. I don't know how they're gonna track that. I don't know how they're gonna understand if someone knows about crypto, but they're putting this cooling off period in to protect them. And I kind of, I, I, although I'm quite angry about this one, I don't like it. I kind of see it. I kind of see why they would do it. You know, when you got into crypto for the first time, how many mistakes did you make in those first few months, right? Probably made all of the mistakes. This cooling off period can allow you to invest your first money or at least give yourself some time before you can act so you can learn about how these things move. Like 
the, one of the first lessons you learn is you, when you think you're buying the bottom, there will always be another bottom, if, if not go even lower. That's always the case, right? So you always will have a better opportunity to buy a little bit later on. But you never realize that when you get started. You think, this is the bottom. Then it goes down and you go, this is the bottom. It goes down again. This is the <laughs> but you, you have to learn those things the hard way. Potentially that cooling off period might be a good thing. They also now have regulations for all kinds of operations within crypto, like trading platforms, swapping crypto assets, even lending in crypto and arranging that, all the way through to custody of your digital assets as well. This is truly, I mean, the UK right now seems like the most regulated country in the world. It's a double-edged sword. We want the regulation to kind of bring in adoption, but this regulation is also limiting retail adoption. And really, we care about the people, right? We care about retail adoption. By proxy, we also care about the institutional adoption just by the assets that we're in. But we really want as many people in as possible before they shut us out. And it seems like the regulations in the UK are shutting people out. Their UK approach has also started to align with the EU regulations. We saw the MICA bill come out a few months ago. But they're trying to create this environment where the laws are essentially interoperable with the rest of Europe. And this kind of just makes sense to bring everything on the same playing field. Just like you see with ISO 20022, it's a standard for messaging across the world. You kind of need these regulations to be standardized as well. And when you got countries like the USA or any other country outside of Europe, for example, they're all going to be looking at Europe's MICA bill and the UK's legislation and basically building up their regulation based on what we've done. And so even though this isn't about you, Americans, this, this video it still applies because you're just going to see the same things maybe with different terminology. We have also seen this regulation of stablecoins. This is going to be expected in 2024, giving the Financial Conduct Authority all powers to oversee them. Once they have all the powers, this is where I start seeing UBI and CBDCs coming out. I think that starts happening in 2024. We've seen the G20 timelines for cross-border payments and there's a CBDC timeline. It all kind of aligns here. But 2024, certainly with the regulation of stable coins and the use of stable coins, is going to start in, in 2024. Prepare yourself for that. On the flip side of things, though, that will seem quite negative and I actually probably do hold the position that actually this is kind of kind of sucks. It kind of sucks. Why everything that we've talked about with this legislation kind of sucks. Um, but one thing is, is that the UK has now committed to accelerating the implementation of digital assets. Now, this is exciting because they're accelerating the implementation of the rules. So we want rules now. We want it right now and let's get them in place. I think if we're going to go to this regulating environment, which we are, we've known this for a while, let's just make it quick, right? Let's rip the bandaid off, let's get regulated, and let's, let's do it with some speed. And it seems like that's what they're committing to right here. So what does this mean for us as XRP holders and crypto asset holders in general? Well, let's start with some, some negative sides. The big negative here for me is that there is so much oversight into how crypto assets operate. Just like this, this promotional ban, the no more refer a friend things, the, the cooling off period. I don't like this. I don't like this at all. Um, this really confirms my worst suspicions that they're going to have this overarching control and we won't be able to do anything about it. This is oversight and, in my opinion, also overreach, but is also the reality that we knew was coming. And so I really view this as, as negative. I really think that cooling off period is going to limit the adoption, at least the influx of new investors that happens in a new bull run, especially in the UK. The UK is really tight in the reins here, and I don't think that's good for the next bull run. How that impacts the bull run at scale globally? Probably not much, but it certainly starts restricting first-time investors, which you kind of need first-time investors for a bull run to even happen in the first place. Now, the positive side of things is that this could now bring regulatory clarity and definitions to digital settlement assets. I talked about a while ago, probably on the 28th of July this year, where I made a video saying that tomorrow we have new regulations coming in, or at least definitions of digital settlement assets. Now, when you think digital settlement assets, my brain immediately goes to cryptocurrencies that settle value, settle payments, that is XRP and XLM. We're thinking about the institutional side when we think about XRP. The digital settlement assets are super interesting, even if they are just stable coins, or maybe they also include XRP or assets like XRP, where there's not many. Moving at the speed they're moving, 
will provide us with quicker clarity on how XRP is defined. I've been saying this for a while. How you define XRP means a whole lot. Like, it really impacts the rest of the world how you define an asset. Because how you define an asset that is very versatile and does so many things can impact its integration into the world. If you call XRP a store of value, then and that's the definition it gets, then that's the category it gets put into. It's very hard to have XRP globally acknowledged as a currency, a legal tender, which we talked about yesterday. Go and check out that video. A legal tender. Now you've got a store of value. Now you've got a utility asset. Now you've got a digital asset. Like there's so many different ways of categorizing. And so I'm, I would just be, I'm excited about the idea of having some clarity in the definitions of what digital settlement asset is. And I think of all of the names that you can call XRP and categorize XRP as, digital settlement asset is a really good one. And now that there is regulatory clarity, people know the boundaries. This is the problem with their, their SEC and the way they've operated, leaving lots of gray space and blurry rules and people not knowing what's happening. Well, in the UK now, cryptocurrency firms and blockchain firms know the rules. They know the path of the course. They know the boundaries. And so now this could actually trigger innovation and growth in the space now that there are clear rules and roadmaps. So that could be good for XRP because we can get general adoption. And if it's, a, if it's categorized as a digital settlement asset and people are building on that idea of XRP, that's only good for the value of XRP. So for me personally, this is a real mixed bag. It's a real mixed bag. I, I kind of, I knew this was all coming. We all knew this was all coming. Now it's here. I feel like part of me has died. <laughs> just to be honest, you know, I just, it's just, uh, it's here guys. Regulation is here. It feels like overreach from where I'm standing from the documents I've read and the articles I've read. It feels like overreach and it doesn't feel good at all. But now that we know the rules of the game, we also know that it's more important now than ever to be connected with professionals in this space because when this thing happens, when XRP is used the way it's supposed to be used and we hope that the value of those assets goes up in a liquidity event, which is when portfolios go up and there's a big moment, we need to know who to contact uh, and we need to be surrounded by people who have our best interest at heart. That's exactly why I created the 1% Mastermind. I'm going to talk about that at the end of the video here. So let it play out and listen to it if you're interested in it. The price of the Mastermind goes up every single week. So if you are in fact interested, your price will be locked in as long as you're a member at the price that you joined at. So stick around if you want to hear all about that. But for now, from me, stay emotionless and I'll see you in the next one. Over the last six months, things have started to shift. And by a shift, I mean, over the last six months, more people who meet that high net worth individual status have been contacting, asking me if I can facilitate large crypto purchases, connect them with people in private equity. And I found, quite frankly, that I've been quite good at that. And as time has gone on, I've really realized that I can connect people with some fantastic deals, great investment opportunities, and provide solutions for people at that level that you've probably never thought of. I acknowledge that not everyone is a high net worth individual, at least yet. And so that's exactly why I've created the 1% Mastermind. Over the last two years of making content, I've seen one of the biggest demands and needs of the audience is to have a list of professionals that you can contact when this whole thing takes off. When all the money comes in, our portfolios are of high value, what now? What do we do? Who do we contact? There's also a group of individuals that want to improve and do business and network among other millionaires to be. Nobody in the digital asset space has ever seen anything like this. Wherever you are in the world, the plan of the mastermind is to be able to connect you with professionals, not only in accounting and tax and law and estate planning, but to connect you with individuals who actually understand the assets you hold. We know about this all too well. We call an accountant and you know more about Bitcoin and XRP than they do. And it's not just a directory of professionals that we're offering here. We also have unique investment opportunities for individuals, even if you don't meet the accredited investor requirements. When you think about diversifying your assets in the long term, you might be considering real estate, venture capital, private equity. You won't need to go over here to find a deal. You won't need to go over here to find a deal. It will all be housed in that one central location and you'll be surrounded by individuals that are on the same page as you and want the same thing, not just for themselves, but they want the same thing for you. In addition to all of that, we'll also have a library of content answering your specific 
questions. Not made for views, not made for engagement, but made specifically to add value to the library of content that there will be. As time goes on, the price of the membership will actually go up and likely will go up every single week from here on out. So join the 1% Mastermind today and I'll see you in there.